The following is a presentation of Play Fly Sports Properties. I was just laughing. I thought it was funny. Now they got excited. It's it's good. You know, sometimes you get your little brother excited when you're playing basketball and stuff. You let him get the lead. And then you just come back and take it back. Did you think of Michigan State as your little brother? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it as it was just yesterday. Like it was yesterday. I was sitting about the 40-yard line. Michigan State led 24-14. Was going to be a big upset. Was going to be a crowning jewel for Mark D'Antonio in his first season. And then Brian Mallett snaps the ball or he gets the ball, and he gets hit. He fumbles. So we're like, oh, yes. Lo and behold, Mike Hart hides behind the whole line picks it up, runs, and uh, I remember he ran, you know, 15, 20 yards, made somebody miss, and I came in and made the tackle, and it's first down. And a big letdown. The Spartans eventually lost the game, a devastating loss. But the real dig came soon after, during a press conference with team captain Mike Hart. Sometimes you get your little brother excited when you're playing basketball and stuff, you let him get the lead, and then you just come back and take it back. <laughs> just, this, just his demeanor when he said it was just... It got Coach D upset, um, and then it got all of us upset. Yeah, can you tell my tone? <laughs> all right. This game, this game is an important game. This game is an important game. So they want to mock us all they want to mock us. I'm telling them it's not over. So they can print all that crap all they want all over their locker room. It's not over. It'll never be over here. You could see just in his stern eye, it was just fire. It's just starting. But just remember, pride comes before the fall. Anything specific? Just here, pride comes before the fall. Well, we all know what time it is. It is officially Rivalry Week here in East Lansing. We are live from Jolly Pumpkin on Albert Street, deep in the heart of downtown East Lansing. This is Sparta. I'm your host, Jason Strayhorn, along with my co-host, Otis Wiley. And J.U. Tutu <laughs> Culcrit. You really took it on, on them, oh, huh? Yeah. 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 It, it's rivalry yeah. week, so we're going gangster yeah. on them there. Okay. <laughs> I, oh, my bad, my bad. It's time to have some little fun today, guys, right? I mean, this is, we got a bye week leading up into the main game of the year, right, against the school down the road. And what better way to kick it off than with the resident Spartan, the president, owner, CEO, CFO, resident Spartan, who made a mistake and started off at the school down the road, but quickly righted his wrongs and came to East Lansing, and that's none other than Tony Grant. Tony! Jay. How you doing, man? I'm great. How are you guys? Uh, good to see you here. We're here yeah. in uh, your place, your establishment. Thank Tell you. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing in, in this establishment here. It's beautiful. It's, beautiful. But it's, it's awesome, man. Oh man, I um, it's I've been at this company for about ten years now, and for about nine of it, I was trying to find a spot in East Lansing so we could open a restaurant. So uh, we're we're very happy that we've got a location now deep in the heart of EL. Uh, we got Jolly Pumpkin there. Jolly Pumpkin's one of the top breweries in the world, one of the top one hundred breweries in the world. It's the one of the top three all sour breweries in the world, um, and we've got some great food and some great beer there for everybody. So I'm glad you guys are there. Thanks for coming. Speaking oh, of great food, man, I mean, J.U. and Otis, all, all three of us, man, <laughs> we got to talk about one thing on my, the, the one item on the menu, and, and that is, J.U., take it from here. I tell you, they always bring the food to me, and Stray's like the former lineman, you know, the big boys like to eat, but I'll take it, you know, the big backs, we, we like to eat too, but that chicken sandwich, Ooh. that's here, money, absolutely money, <laughs> the sauce, the heat, the sauce. Let's talk about when we first had it. <laughs> is it came fresh off the off the fryer onto the table. I grabbed it. I didn't even think about it twice. Just bit right into it. Flaming hot. What was the comment that you made? Steam coming out of Steam the coming out of my mouth. <laughs> what was the comment? You breathe said, man, be careful, man. I was uh, you're gonna be like that McDonald's coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you you don't sue my man, Tony. You can't do that. You know, that was your fault. You got to be able to you know, take it easy. Let that steam come off of that boy yeah. so that your tongue didn't blister up. Yeah, I don't, I don't need to do that, actually. That's not why I'm in I don't know what you 
did with that sandwich. Uh, the chef back there, the real, the real MVP for that sandwich. It's absolutely phenomenal with the the fries, the aioli, uh, dipping sauce in there. <laughs> so what he's trying to say is, he wants to where say is our chicken sandwich? <laughs> Gaston. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Oh, we'll get so some awesome. later on the show here. And wash yeah. it down with a... With a little Sparta. With a Sparta of the American. Oh, yeah. IPA. One of these, this is Sparta, the, the Sparta drinks. Well done, yes. Sparta, Sparta IPA, the American maybe. IPA. That's right. And Tony, it's, it's obviously, let's talk about the backstory. So when I was a fundraiser here at Spartan Fund, my job and responsibility was to work with former players <laughs> who are alums and who are doing business. And so you remember the time we went out to your spot in the backwoods of the school down the road. Yep. Can you talk about when we sat down in Jolly Pumpkin in Ann Arbor on like me telling you we need to put one here in East Lansing. And then now we're here, right? Can you talk about that and how yeah. you started with North Peak but also with Jolly Pumpkin? Oh, the backstory, yeah. So so many, many moons ago, uh, Jolly Pumpkin was formed. It was in 2004. And then uh, before that, actually, North Peak became a brand. That was in 1997. So I got involved in about 2008, 2009 as a, just as an investor. I was working uh, full time at uh, Borders Bookstores at that point, actually. Um, the What happened was we merged those two brands together and created a, a brewery company that would produce and distribute both Jolly Pumpkin and North Peak beers throughout the state of Michigan and then more broadly. And then opened up two restaurants, one in Ann Arbor and one in Traverse City, both under the Jolly Pumpkin name. Those are the first Jolly Pumpkin restaurants. And then fast forward, um, when you and I were were meeting in Ann Arbor, um, we still hadn't found anything in the area. We were looking at Lansing. We were looking at, you know, kind of all over the area to see if we could find something. But we, we wanted to be in East Lansing, you know, right downtown. It just was kind of out of our uh, – I had a big idea, no pocketbook at that point, if you want to take a turn for my mom. Ooh, um, no pocketbook. We like that. That's, that's mom turn. <laughs> Uh, what ended up happening is I met a guy through the city named Mark Bell, who Mark Bell played at Wisconsin. He actually scored his, he was a tight end and he scored his only touchdown against, actually it might've been 2005 uh, in East Lansing. So we didn't, we played against each other maybe one year, 2002, sorry, 2002. We played against each other in 2001. Anyway, we, we have become really good friends since then. He is the architect of that whole project that you're sitting in. So the, the apartments above the target on, Grand River, the Jolly Pumpkin space and everything down the line there, Foster's Coffee, Barrio, all that stuff. And so he said, let's get you guys into East Lansing. And we came up with a deal to make it happen. Um, and so we opened up in COVID in 2020. We were supposed to open up in April or June of 2020. And then that got put on pause, obviously. Um, we ended up opening up, I think it was October of 2020 in that space. So no looking back. It's been a great location for us. And I'm so proud to be, you know, putting money in to East Lansing, which I consider my second home versus where I was born. And, um, you know, be a part of the community now. Well, Tony, you know, talk about your affinity for the uh, the IPAs the, in the in the beer. Uh, you know, going back to your college days, oh, it may have there? been a, a love of yours, maybe, uh, for you to actually <laughs> take the, the leap and invest in a company that, that has such great beer. But tell us how that started. Yeah, you know, beers. In a good way, beer's always kind of been like, you know, I associate a lot of the good things that you know, growing up, my parents, a celebration, there'd be, there'd be drinks around, people be drinking. And, um, you know, it was, it was, for me, I was very lucky and fortunate to grow up or it wasn't a negative in my life. And so, you know, I've always associated a good time and, you know, I, I may have drank some beer in college. I mean, you know, <laughs> and, uh, may have had some good times associated with beer drinking in college. <laughs> Um, uh, allegedly, 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 <laughs> nothing, nothing is documented except for now. Um, <laughs> but, but I got out, I got out into the real world and started working and was working with some people that had had this, this business, the, 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 you know, the makings of this business. And I just, I saw what they were doing on the, on the, with the restaurants they were building and how this craft beer movement was, was starting to take hold, especially in the state of Michigan. Um, and I always looked at it as a, you know, we, we, the state of Michigan in particular, we've got such a tremendous agricultural base and we've got such a great manufacturing, manufacturing heritage, you know, with the auto industry. 
um, you, you start to marry that. And what do you have? You have, you know, beer, you know, wine production, ciders, all these other kind of food products and everything else. And I started getting really interested in that space um, and took a kind of a leap. I actually borrowed money from a good friend of mine and my parents to invest in this company. Um, and then I paid it back over time. And then, uh, you know, just really got into what they were doing. The stores are cool. I mean, the store you're in right now is 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 similar to the original vision for the company. It's a real great space to hang out, to, you know, to be with friends, to have a good time. Um, and, uh, and the beer side, you know, it's, I was working in the book business at that point, And I always looked and was proud of the, the company I was with. I always uh, looked at it as, you know, the, the book world, you have something for everybody. You, any interest that you have, you can find it in a bookstore. And in the beer industry, and especially the craft beer, there's so much creativity and so much going on that it's another industry where it crosses demographics, it crosses generations. Um, it crosses, you know, wealth. It, it just brings people together. There's a, there's a quote, you know, beer is the lubrication of society. And a lot of things have been figured out in a beer hall, you know, over the, the eons or, or, or at, a, at, the, at the city square uh, over a beer. And so, um, you know, I, I've, I, I've had nothing but fun in the industry since then and, and still believe, you know, it's a really cool industry to be in. Yeah, Tony, I think it's, uh, one, it's great that we now have eight a partnership with uh, MSU and athletics, you know, us sitting down, breaking bread and truly understanding like this was the first partnership from a forward facing public marketing for Jolly Pumpkin. Uh, but people don't know that you were the first one, first company locally to do an NIL deal with Michigan State football and the office alignment, yeah, aka the buddy. Juice Squad. The Juice Squad. That's right. Yes, sir. Talk about how that came about. You know, it was uh, that was early days. And I think it was the first NIL deal maybe the university did at all um, or sorry, not the university, but any 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 player had at all at the university. And it was something where, um, you know, I felt like I had an opportunity to to do something fun. You know, this isn't a individual, you know, big name. I'm looking to brand something with somebody's fame. This is more of a be involved you know, got the whole squad there. I had the long snappers there too, which was, was like a fun angle um, for me playing O-line and long snapping. Um, and, and, you know, it's like a feel good. It's a team thing. It's not, you know, like I said, it's not an individual thing. And we love it because the guys come in. I mean, the staff loves seeing the guys. Um, you know, I think they love the food. They sure eat a lot of it. Um, you know, we've, done, we've done some some dinners together and stuff like that too. So it's been a really good good program, and I'm proud to to have have done that. It was at that point it was a wild wild west. I still think NIL is somewhat of the wild wild west. People are trying to figure things out, and feel it out. But at that point, it was just like, okay, we'll just figure it out as we go. Just this is what we're gonna do, and you know, um, let's let's do it. Let's try it and get this thing going. Man, kudos to you on that, man. I think Jay, you laughed because I think we said the long snappers. You know what happened but last listen, week. I think I heard. You know, yeah, I heard you. You heard that snicker, right? Oh, oh, yeah, he yeah, was yeah, a yeah, good, yeah. He was a great one, though. You know? I'm telling you, if that that's how you make your money. If you get past college and go to the next level and be a long snapper, you can be a guy that's there for 15, 20 years, yeah. just snapping the ball. So you know, kudos hey, to long snappers. Right now. Yeah. yeah. What, what was what was that? What was the fastest time on that snap for you? Oh man. 0.67 maybe 0.66. Ooh, ooh. So can, can, I used can to you, throw some uh, seeds. Because <laughs> uh, a few weeks ago I heard Justin Tucker talking about this. Can you walk us through? It's, should it be about what three point what second from snap to kick? Oh, from snap to kick? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't even remember <laughs> to be honest. With you. <laughs> Put you on the spot. <laughs> It's, it's been a couple of weeks since he did that now, you know, so you got to give Tony a little grace. And on remember, that. I did but, drink but a lot of beer in college. <laughs> as, a, as a long snapper slash center, uh, it seems to be that those guys end up being some of the best members of society for some reason, Tony. I don't know why it is it, uh, outside of the, the running backs, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> and maybe it's some safeties. <laughs> the center position. Let's they talk really about are. that a little bit, Tony. We can here. Like, is. let's put the beer. Well, we can have the beer. And me and you talk about the center position and how come so many of uh, those guys tend to go on to success in um, society like you have here at Jolly Pumpkin. And, and like you. 
brother. <laughs> oh, me? Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 and you best be damn, you best be like spot on every time you do what you're doing or everybody's yeah. going to be on you for it. So I, think, I think there's some hum- humility that's bred in us as we go through life at that position and that part, part of the game where, you know, you, you've got everything on the line from the, pr- from the perspective of your brand if it goes wrong. If you you're exposed. Right, you're exposed. You always, have no brand you, always have, mess up. you always have hands under. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> no, yeah, he didn't. He was never more far back from him. Oh, man. I was, I was guard on the O-line. So. Okay, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that long snapper position. And the, the whole specialty position. You guys are, one, I have. you guys are babied during training camp. <laughs> oh, here we go. You know, here we go. We're going to talk about college. kickers again, J.D.? Yeah. You have one job, make snap the ball and make the kick. Well, you got to snap, you got to defend, and you got to run and tackle too. Don't forget about yeah. that. Yeah, the kind of athletes. I play offense but and defense. Forget, Tony, you know your first year in '98, you came up there like for spring ball, I can recall, and in the summer you disappeared. And I'm like, what, what, Tony, Tony's going to die when it comes time for the running test. It's something. For you youngsters, they used to have a thing called running test. They don't do it anymore in they sports. Don't do it anymore? But back when we played, no. you guys had that too, oh, right? The running test. You know what I'm talking about. But then when Grant comes back for the fall, he just like blows it out. I'm talking like 16 one tens, whatever, whatever death Dashers. and destruction test that Coach Manny came up with. You had no problem with it, man. What did you <laughs> do over the summer? Was it the the, the Sparta American IPA that got you in shape <laughs> for those runs, or what? Tell us the secret. No, I wasn't. I wasn't as blessed as, as my boy as my boy Duckett to be able to come in and do whatever. Let run a four one. <laughs> run a four uh, one. <laughs> my, my my dad. My dad's an old ball coach, and so we would we trained every day. In fact, one of his favorite activities was he'd have me. He'd sit in his blazer. All right, and he. would he pumped the brake every every once in a while, but I'd had to push him to, around the block. Ooh. And everyone made, <clears throat> made my mom bring him a beer. He'd sit in there, you know, it, the car wouldn't be on. <laughs> I'd be pushing him, push him down the block. And to make it tougher, he'd hit the brake a little bit every once in a while, too. So I couldn't get any momentum going. <laughs> oh, <that's awesome. laughs> I remember going down the block at times and people would stop their cars and be like, do you need help? And he'd be like, no. And I'd be like, yes, please. <laughs> CPS, call him. Yeah. Child abuse services. That's right. right. Child, child abuse happening here. That's that, we, that's that we good put old in work. fashion training. We put in work. Yeah. Running, uh, lifting. You know, I'd be snapping all summer long. I, we created contraptions so I could snap when I was by myself and have, I didn't need anybody there to catch snaps. The stuff that they have now on the market. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think I think when I left when I left Michigan and, you know, I went home for that fall and just watched. I was watching ball. I was watching football on TV. And I, I, at that point, I thought I didn't know if I was going to be playing football anymore. And so, uh, you know, I kind of went through a lot, went through some depression, went through some kind of, you know, what did I do <clears throat> leaving football? And then I, 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 you know, woke up and called up, you know, Coach Baggett, who was my boy. He brought me in. He had been recruiting me before that. And uh, when I came in in 98, I was, I mean, I had already gone through losing something that I love so much that when I came back in and I could run, I could, you know, practice, whatever it was that I could do to be on that field and, and be better. I was all in on it. It was just, and so I just had a different mentality. I loved those tests. I love training for all that stuff. And um, because I knew it was only a finite window, you know, I could do it. So you're telling us right now, live here from the Jolly Pumpkin, that adversity actually propelled you to do more in your life. Oh, without a doubt. You know, people say sometimes you don't know how much you love or 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 or, or need or realize you 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 love something until you lose it, mm-hmm. and and for people to lose something sometimes that means you you've lost it. You don't you don't get a chance. You don't get a second chance. There's a lot of things in life like that. For me, fortunately, you know, at 18 years old, I lost something. I mean, this is this is not compared to you know losing a loved one or or something like that. But but I lost football. I lost the game. And, uh, you know, I came back with a vengeance after that because, you know, I, I realized like, oh, you know, I, I love this. This is part of me. This is me. It's part of my brand. It's who I am. 
And I've got a couple more years left to do this. You know, I got to take full advantage of every second of it. And I think, you know, there's a lot of, of people that don't, don't come into, you know, you know, we've, we had teammates that didn't want to be there that, you know, they could have had all the world talent in the world, but um, they just didn't, they couldn't love it like that. Cause it probably felt just like too much pressure and too much work. <clears throat> and so, you know, to lose it and then to come back and be able to gain it, get it back was a blessing, a complete blessing. That's, that's, that's paved my, you know, my path um, in a significant way, I think, throughout my career in life. Amen to that, man. Well, it's hate week, right? We talk about it. Hate week, rivalry. We were just talking about how it's rivalry. tough to say that word. It's tough to say rivalry. But you also have partnered with that team down the road when it comes to rivalry with the cause. Talk about it. You've been involved with this for years, even before Jolly Pumpkin, North Peak. But talk about the cause. Yeah, so rivals, rivals for a cause. <clears throat> it's a it's a charity where we raise money to donate to different charities. So we, we have been kind of on a three, three different charity rotation It all. It all started actually with um, a teammate, teammate of ours, uh, Josh Thornhill, who got some, you know, very bad news about his son um, several years ago. I think it was 2017. Um, and I just, and I heard, you know, heard this, his, his son was diagnosed with the, um, an operable brain tumor, essentially. So pediatric cancer brain cancer. And I, I just was heartbroken. I mean, Josh is a good friend of mine. We were, we were really tight. Um, we were playing ball. Um, and so I just felt I had to do something. And so I just, we had just come out with these beers, um, hail and Sparta. And it just kind of triggered in my head, like, you know, I've got something fun to, to get people interested. And maybe during that week I could raise some money and raise some awareness <clears throat> and just try to help do something as opposed to just sitting and, and, you know, sitting on my hands. So that, that was where the rivals for a cause was born. <clears throat> um, and, and what we've kind of done is, you know, we raised some decent money that year. I, I kind of just built a website and was walking around giving people beer and asking them for money, which isn't a really great way to raise money. <laughs> um, but t actually, uh, Todd, Doug Duckett, I reached out to him for a little bit of mentoring because he's so involved in, in philanthropy and he coached me up pretty, pretty well. And so we partnered with 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 him too through um, the New World Flood organization, and he helped me raise money too. So the second year we raised money for women's cancer. My wife is a cancer survivor, um, and we did that for the women's uh, cancer hospital here at the U of M uh, Health System. <clears throat> and then that that diagnosis led to us not being able to have uh, biological children, and we actually adopt have adopted two beautiful uh, daughters. And that led me to do uh, last year's raise, which we had a little break because of COVID, but I found uh, uh, the David Thomas Foundation, which is the only nationwide foster care adoption uh, charity. And we raised money for them last year. And so this year we're circling back and we're raising money for the CS Mott Cancer um, Hospital. And so that's for pediatric cancer. And so for the kids, we're raising money again this year. And Hale and Sparta are front and center. So um, obviously Sparta being a dominant uh, piece of that whole puzzle um, as we all know, but, That's um, right. so, you know, we get all of our pubs right now, you can come in and you drink a pint, <clears throat> you order a pint, we will donate a dollar, uh, for every pint that's ordered, or we have these commemorative glasses, like the Sparta glass you have there on the table, um, that will for five or for 10 bucks, uh, you get to keep the glass, get a pint of beer and then we'll donate five bucks. So we're raising money yeah. that way. Um, you know, I'm, I'm out pounding the pavement, you know, you go to rivals for a cause dot org. Um, and you can make a donation and it uh, goes right to CS Mott. You know, we're just talking about it and raising the money, but it's all go, all of it goes right to the charity. There's not a penny that stays behind. That's not, not what this is about. So that's awesome. That's really cool, Tony. And uh, thank you for, you know, taking the lead and doing that. Uh, you know, you mentioned Josh Thornhill and the, getting started with that, you know, really, really good thing, really tragic story about, you know, his, his little one uh, followed that all along, but uh, yeah. big, you know, and that's that's something that people don't realize you know once you're an athlete you always want to give back to community because you've had a lot of help along the way to get you to where you are and uh, it's always anytime that you can give back uh it's really good and thank you for you know doing that thank you for saying that yeah yeah and tony's we, we created a qr code so in jolly pumpkin if you come to visit you're able to scan the qr code it directs you to fill in out some information but also has the link to donate so we're trying to help obviously as best as Love we that. can but thank you you've been a partner of michigan state 
but also allowing us to be here um, just showcases Spartans helping Spartans um, and even beyond the gridiron, which is great, great for us as a, as a program, but just for us as businessmen, too. So appreciate yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, it's something yeah. It, it, the, the, the locker room, the brotherhood, you know, no matter what, that that never dies you, and you never find it again. That's something I've, I've always, you know, I, I think maybe sub, sub mentally have, have sought, you know, trying to find that connection again. But there is nothing like your brothers that were, you know, in that locker room with you and, and generations beyond. You know, we didn't play together, <clears throat> but, you know, I got your back and I know you Absolutely. got mine. It's just something about it. Right. That's right, Tony. And we definitely have your back and we really appreciate your time on the show. We know we love the fact that you were able to start this worthy cause rivals, you know, for, for uh, Marcus Thornhill. That's a child's name, uh, you know, Josh and Katie Jo Thornhill that, tra that died tragically of the brain ca uh, cancer or the pediatric brain cancer and donating a dollar or five dollars or whatever you can afford. You know, we're going to have the QR code here on our podcast here. And then obviously we're going to have it on our, all of our socials so people can easily find it and, and make those donations to a worthy cause. Uh, thank you so much, Tony. I mean, we can talk for hours, I'm sure, especially over a Sparta IPA. You know, Next time we'll do it live. We'll do it together. <laughs> Next time we'll do it together. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. And uh, then I, we, we, we fell in to forget that also in our partnership with Jolly Pumpkin, Tony stepped up and he's supporting women's initiatives for women's sports. So not only is he doing it for the football team, he's also providing three meals for three women's sports teams in Michigan State. It's women's basketball, uh, women's volleyball, and in gymnastics. So we we'll appreciate you stepping up, especially in the year of celebrating Title IX. Yeah. You're stepping up from a brand, but also from a former Spartan and giving back to the, the, the women here that we also – respect uh, just as yeah. much as our own self. So thank you so much, man. We yeah, appreciate I'm, you coming I'm, on the show, man. blessed to be part of it. So thank you. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate it. All right, folks. Hey, go green, man. Go white. Let's get that W. Yes, Let's sir. Go. Let's go. Oh, special thanks to Tony Grant, Jolly Pumpkin for hosting This is Sparta. I don't know who was Jordan or Pippen in the backfield between JU and our guest. Our guest... <laughs> Who we're going to be bringing on now is Javon Ringer. Ring, None ring. other than. Yo, what's up, fellas? What's up? What's up, Rings? How's it going, brother? Things are good, man. Things, Everything's going good. Appreciate y'all having me. I appreciate you. Because I know, we, you know you're busy. Right. You're hey, 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 I, I just got to I gotta shoot first on that comment. Um, I, Me and Jay, you had a great partnership. So we were we were kind of like we were just one two punching it, both of us. It was we, no Jordan, no Pippen. Nah, it was, wasn't none of that, man. <laughs> so you making him smile? Like, <laughs> you make me you make me blush, right? You make me blush. Stop! Oh, hold on, now. You, would nah. you not trade some touchdowns for with Ju a little bit? I mean, he's, he always See, talks about these 22, 21 tutties. What's crazy? Is because you don't see this often. That's how I like things kind of rocked well with me and Ju because you don't see this too often. We had a great relationship with how it would work. I always wanted like yards and he wanted touchdowns. So I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I, was kinda, so, I, was so, so, like, so we, I remember we'll be in the in the locker room or in the meeting room and we just come up with crazy scenarios. And Javon will be like, Hey, Jay, would you rather have 250 yards and one touchdown <laughs> or 90 yards and three touchdowns. I was like, three touchdowns and 90. <laughs> Yo, we, we would literally have discussions like, I, I would be okay if I had 20 carries for like 140 yards, no touchdowns. And then JU could have 14 carries, 80 yards, and three touchdowns. Like, we're good. Oh, wow. We're both looking, looking good. Yeah, and like I said, back to like the relationship me and him had, we even we didn't even care who started. Like, depending on the play, if I liked it, he let me take it, or if he liked it, I let him take it, or if it was just kind of whatever, we paper rock scissors for it. Like, man, whoever won it, they got it. <laughs> That's the it's it's, it's real. It's been verified. <laughs> yeah. We've been talking about this paper rock scissors for a long time. We didn't know if it was true, man. No, it that was, was that's the honest. The honest to God, no exaggeration. Like, because usually we would get like our first ten plays or whatever. And whatever it was, if both of us kind of was like, I don't really care. Like, hey, whatever. All right, come on. 
And then whoever won, and like, all right, you got it. <laughs> wow. Rain, man. You and me, go ahead. I remember Javon such a selfless player. He won on senior day against Penn State, and he's like, no, you take it, you take it. And it was a play designed for him. And I remember Coach Enos is like, well, great, you got to take this one because it's some – outside zone or screen or some yeah. funky play that I had to go out. I'm like, nah, nah I'm good. I'm good. Put me, put me <laughs> Too much water. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got it. That's the thing. You got to know your limits. You got to know your role. You got to know how you fit in, yeah. especially if you're in a running back by committee. And, you know, Javon and I had a great relationship with that. And, you know, rings of all the accolades and all the stuff you got on the field, you're a better, better dude off the field, man. Appreciate that, man. Same, and, man. You know, we 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 class 05. We came in together, man. No doubt. Yeah, and, we was uh, we was one of the few like freshmen's early freshmen players. Early, early. So Javon came in ready. Like we are what he looked like now. He came in ready. Look. Now I was one of those guys that came in from the track. I was scrawny, <laughs> man. You, you remember that first test, like benching? I couldn't bench the bench press. The two twenty five. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, I that's amazing. Yo, I remember that. Thank yeah, you. I know. But now let's talk about man. Like me and Javon, actually Javon was supposed to roommate. Roommate, he was supposed to be rooming with Ross Weaver, uh-huh. and then I was rooming with RJ, or so AJ Jimerson, mm-hmm. Arthur Lee Jimerson. Let's Arthur get Lee. that right. So we ended up figuring out like me and Ross knew each other coming in. So Dino Felino, we just honored Felino last week. Man. We said, hey Felino, I don't really know Javon. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even know AJ. Can we room up? So he switched it. So we had two running backs, two safeties, defensive backs rooming together. It makes sense. Uh, but let's talk about it, man. Like you're from Ohio, the OH 10. Uh, Shamanai, which is prominent in bringing in some studs in, the, in college football and playing in the pros. Like, talk about Ohio and your roots, but also coming to Michigan State and that whole story. Um, well, back when I was coming up, I feel like I feel like some times have changed a little bit because even when I was coming up, even from high school, it was always a, a grind type of mentality. Like y'all have to be in that weight room. You got to get strong. You got to get powerful if you want to have any chance to succeed, not just in Ohio, but against these other people around the country. So when I was coming up, man, that's like you said, when I came into Michigan State, like I, I already you know, you hear those stories how people gain like 20 something pounds once they get into college or whatever. And and it's usually because they didn't really work out like that in high school. And now they're actually putting on muscle. I did like throughout my four years of college. I only I only gained about maybe seven pounds and I stayed the same. So, man, coming from where I came from, that was uh, the athletes I competed against. You know, we, we were kind of loaded and, and we, we were very loaded and it really helped establish my work ethic early which helped me once I still got to college. Yeah, man. So just for the record, <laughs> I, I, people are going to think when I tell these stories, I was 255 in college, 8% body fat. All right. Just, just for the record, I was not lazy, I was, but I'd like to do some, I like to eat. <laughs> I, I, like, I like to eat. So every day. J.U. I, no matter what anybody says, bro, you pass to have gastric test. Like <laughs> they, don't, sure. they don't do that. They don't do that stuff no more. Like you pass to have gastric test. So like they twenty have gastric. He bro, trains bro. his mind. He trains his mind to to win the test to pass the test. Exactly. <laughs> Just do this once, so you don't have to wake up at five thirty to go the next day. But, but I remember every every meeting we'll come in there and you know Coach Enos and my my senior year now. So Coach Enos will come in. He'll bring Javon a coffee. Javon had to drink a coffee before every practice. And like, he would bring <laughs> he'll bring me whatever leftovers like the coaches have for lunches. So it would be like B dubs wings or a burrito. <laughs> I'm sitting there smashing a burrito. And Javon drinking coffee. I'm like, damn, look at us. <laughs> hey, yo, good. Shout, I, I don't oh know if Coach goodness. Enos, I don't know if Coach Enos will hear this, but shout out to Coach Enos, man. Because of him. Bring because I remember it was one of those days during camp I was kind of dragging, and he, yeah he just he he could tell kind of in meeting so he brought me he brought me this coffee and it kind of picked me up, and ever since then like that's kind of what started me with this whole coffee thing. So hey, Coach Enos, you hear this man? I appreciate you, man. So you didn't drink coffee 
till Coach Eno's brought you a yeah. couple of black a uh, couple of uh. No, yeah, and, but he, yeah, that was the first. That was the first time really kind of having it. And ever since then, like I've kind of stuck with it. It's not an everyday thing. I don't want to get too reliant on the caffeine, but yeah, that is that is kind of what I do. Man, so so Javon, talk a little bit about your ability. Like you know, you had some breakout games against the school down the road, right? You know, I can recall like you breaking out for long touchdown roads in the big house. You know, this is rivalry week times two since it's a bye week for Michigan State right now and Michigan. You know, talk about the mindset of you. You are a legendary Spartan dog, all American in the backfield. You know, we having some trouble in the backfield right now uh, for Michigan State. We're running the ball. We had a little bit more consistency against Wisconsin in the homecoming game a week ago this past week. But what is your mindset going into a game, especially one like this? My mindset was always, it, it wasn't, how can I say this? Not necessarily, I knew how to kind of get myself where I needed to be, but it was more so me encouraging our offensive line because everything Ooh. starts up front. Like everything. I don't care who the running back is. Like that. that is my honest to God opinion. If you have a beast offensive line, they can make an average running back look amazing by just establishing the line of scrimmage. So every time it came in, and and what's crazy with this game, usually whoever wins up front, they usually win the game. That's I rarely remember it not being that way. If you can control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, you usually had a pretty good chance on winning the game. So that was always my mindset, making sure my offensive line was ready. And then me, myself, man, I knew it was going to be a, 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 a brutal game, but I, I relished in that. Like, I love that because that, that is a very physical game. And the fact that there's always that disrespect from them. Like, no matter no matter how the year is going, I remember if, even in some of the D'Antonio years when they clearly had the better team than Michigan, everybody still goes with – like, they, they, they still think Michigan is going to win. It's still the disrespect to Michigan State. So that was always added fuel to the fire, too. But specifically when I was at Michigan State, I mean, just truth be told, we didn't have the most success. Like I said, I, I didn't even beat that team until what my senior oh, year. Sure, yeah. yeah, yeah, man. So I that I don't know, man. The fact on how disrespectful they could be, it always kind of just adds a little more fuel to it, which is really the more fuel isn't needed. It's already there. But you know, just and just the fact on how not just them, but these these older people in the media, they grew up when Michigan was, you know, doing what they were doing. So they always kind of hype Michigan up too. But and just their fan base and knowing that if you could win that game, like you literally you mess up their entire year. I don't care what other game, what whatever get other games they may win. If you can beat them, Michigan, if they lose to Michigan State, that just puts a sour taste a sour taste in their mouth for the next whole year until we play again. Right. So, Giovanni, so uh- Otis hit on it. You're a kid from Ohio, had success in Ohio. What made you choose Michigan State? Um. Hey, full transparency. You be honest, my brother. Yeah. Talk about the journey because I know it. Um, but talk um, about the recruiting process because you're here in your what, year. I know you got injured. Ma- but. Yeah. Um, what made me choose Michigan State was honest, honestly, it was some of it was my father. My dad. A lot of it was my dad. My dad really liked Michigan State when we took a visit there because I tore my ACL actually my senior year of high school. But even with tearing my ACL, I didn't really lose out on any scholarships that I had. And what's crazy, USC, Southern California, they actually offered me after I tore my ACL. So that it wasn't a lack of recruiting. But when I took a visit, it just had kind of worked out to where I had my surgery I didn't take any visits to any other schools. And then when I finally was able to walk again, you know, we went up to Michigan State. That was like my that was my only that was my only visit. And I actually had plans to still visit some other schools. But my father, um, something about Michigan State, he loved it. And then that's what really because I didn't personally really I didn't really know much. much I didn't know too much about Michigan State. But um, but once I was looking into it and seeing how much my dad loved it, I think at the time. At the time, because it was like it was, they had three running backs: J, J U, J, uh, Jason Teague, and uh, what was it Cobb. DeAndre Cobb? Yeah, yeah. So him and then with Drew, they were like, you guys were like, like number one in the Big Ten in rushing, and then like top, 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 top in the nation. And then of course, I wanted to go someplace where I could play right away. And then DeAndre, so I saw the rotation, and then DeAndre was a senior, 
So I'm putting all these into perspective and thinking like, well, if he leaves, that's me. That's then maybe, me. Then maybe <laughs> I, yeah, I could come in and, you know, you know, there we go. Boom. And then you know, I'll be able to help out. And it is I'm still in the Big Ten. And, you know, maybe this could, this could be – this is what it's supposed to be. So that's kind of why I ultimately end up choosing Michigan State. Who are the other who school? Who's your host? Who the other schools? You? My my host was my host was a uh, Brandon McKinney because you know he's from okay. he, yeah, he's yeah, from, yeah. yeah he's from my school so when I came up there they naturally just put us. But you there said you who my, my <laughs> other school? <laughs> Brandon and Stefan hosted me on my visit too. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, hey, the number one two comedians on the squad though. <laughs> like, <laughs> where did they take you? Um, I don't hey, come I, on. No, I don't. We, we went to. We went to. We just went to, to. We went to a few like a few little parties. Like I can't remember the. Some of them were like house party. Yeah, like house party type stuff. What schools were in the running before you said USC? Who else? Yeah, I wanted to take a visit to USC. I wanted to take a visit to Tennessee. I wanted to take a visit to West Virginia. I wanted to take a visit to Florida. Uh, the Gators because they offered me also. Um, and I told John L. Smith that, like, I told him that, like, hey, you know, thank you for the day. Oh, uh, well, this, this this official visit, but like, I want to still take a few visits because I was always told, like, hey, take your visits, take your visits, right. take your visits. Like, and I still, I personally tell players that all the time. Like, even even if it comes to Michigan State or at the, Toledo, whatever, I always tell guys, like, look, because this that's an, that's a huge that's a huge decision, like where you choose to spend your college at, because that's that's a that's the time of your life. That's a big part of your life. Um, even though it's short, it's still a big part of your life. I always tell guys to take their visit. So that's kind of what my mindset was. And then I told I told him that and he said, OK, then when we left, my dad just talking my ear off about Michigan State, this Michigan State, that Michigan State, this Michigan State, that and he like you need you need to hurry up and commit before they before they uh, get a, get us get somebody else. And then and then you're not able to go there and blah, 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 blah. So then I started really thinking about it like, well, they are like top in the Big Ten right now in rushing. Um, I want to play right away. DeAndre Cobb is a senior. He'll be gone. It, okay. I could, I could, you know, I can make it work. Oh, so that's kind of how yeah. that is. But those so were the other you, schools that I was going to try to take a visit to. So you think you, about that. That's all warm weather schools except for West Virginia. All those other ones have warm weather. Yeah, I hate the cold. in the Midwest. I hate, I hate, I hate the cold. The, hate the so, cold. Javon, when you were coming in, were you coming in with that? You said you wanted to play right away. Were you coming in with the mindset of I'm taking Jane you I'm, 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 I'm coming in to be the guy or I want to fit into the piece for the running backs by committee? What was their mindset? I wanted to fit in, like I said, because I knew you guys rotate and you guys rotated a lot. Like it was all, all three of you guys. All three of you had like over six, seven hundred yards rushing. So, like, I really just kind of wanted to come fit in, especially my I mean, I was a freshman, so I wasn't. No, I wanted to. I just wanted to contribute. I was really a team guy. And then every time I watched you guys that, that year, you guys were in a lot of games. And I thought maybe I could just be another piece to help kind of get us over that hump. So, yeah, really, like I didn't really have a mindset of coming in like I want to just take over everything. I want every single carry. I'm, I want to be the only man. It was like, no, nah, once I literally thought I wanted to be that piece. Once DeAndre Cobb left, I could just come in and just kind of help help from there and then just continue to progress, you know, as my years went through college. There's this question I have to ask. I got to ask it because, you know, you're dealing with it right now at the University of Toledo in the name, image and likeness. Yeah. And you think about if we were coming out in 2005 and we were able to capitalize on our name, image and likeness. Bro, like what what I'm, would entice you or incentivize you to make the decision if you get in the shoes of the players now? To yeah, man. Well, one about that whole thing. I'm I'm happy. I'm happy that that is some because it's 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 amazing how much money these universities make off of the grind that these players put in, and and it's not even close. Some people are you know I used to hear that I used to hear those discussions like even at the barbershop like people would talk about man they getting a whole scholarship paid for and blah 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 blah. And I'm like bro that is that's literally nothing compared to the millions on millions on millions of dollars that they're all making on the backs of these players. And then even for myself, like I'm happy for these players, but I was there was a hint, a of, a hint <laughs> of bitterness and jealousy because I think about you know they started selling that 23 jersey, my jersey, my right? so, oh my sophomore year. 
Like, and then, and then I still would see it today. Like, I still see that jersey around whenever every now and then when I'm up there, and I'm like, yo, I, is there any way I can get any back pay on some of this? It's like, reparations. Like, come on, man. Like, the royalties. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, I'm, no, that's like the truth. Like, I would see that and I would think about how just how beneficial that could have been and things that could have helped out with me back then when they actually were, you know, selling my jersey. They started selling that 23 jersey when I was wearing 23. So I don't know, man, but it is a blessing. It is it is a good thing, man. And it's important. A lot of that's that's how that's what a lot of these recruits are going off of. And really, the ones who are benefiting, because I feel like eventually they're gonna have to come up with some rules. Because the ones who are benefiting these kids right now, they're the ones who are gonna benefit off of it. Cause because right now it's just it's just wide open. These kids can make crazy money. And it's and it's a little disadvantage with a lot of other schools too, man. It's kind of, but it's just wild. It's really all over the place. But I think eventually they're gonna have to put some stipulations on it. Yeah. So you talk about your number twenty three jersey being sold, but when you came in as a freshman, you were thirty nine. Oh number thirty nine. What? That wasn't my choice. What that you wasn't his choice. <laughs> I was gonna say like you switched it quick. Yeah, because that was back. That was back when you had to earn uh, earn a good jersey. That was. That was back. You come in as a freshman. It's like, all right, here, freshman, you take that. You change. You want to change it, man? Make some plays. Nowadays, you know these kids. They, you know, they they kind of just kind of get some stuff handed to them without actually having to prove anything first. You remember that? Oh, did you remember back our freshman? We couldn't even we couldn't even talk to the media. To the media. I talked yeah. about this yeah. on our podcast, yeah. which it helped because if you put some of our fellow recruits and classmates, colleagues on there. You don't know what they're gonna say, right? I mean, yeah, that's 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 true. That's yeah. true. That's true. But do you? We talked about this. Should you be able to come into college as a freshman? You need to show thyself approved before you even get a chance to start talking about nil and capitalizing on. Well, yeah, because I, I I do I think about some of these guys who are getting this. They're they're good in high school, and they're getting this. They're getting they're getting this crazy. NIL deal coming in as a freshman, but then how many how many of these top players we know that have came out of high school, they go to that school and then they get beat out by a three-star and then that top guy doesn't even play. But yet, I was wondering, that are they still owed that money? Or how is that going to work out? Like, well, well, so you look at the transfer portal, right? Yeah. You know, some guys go in there voluntary. You know, like, like okay, I don't like this place. I, the coach is just screwing me over, whatever. Well, if you are getting paid a lot of money to come to a school like a lot of these five stars are, yeah. you know, they're, they're going to be told to go to the transfer portal. I mean, welcome to professional sports. That's where it is right now with some of the guys, you know, even at Michigan State that aren't uh, performing. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they're, they're, they're being strongly suggested, you know, as a couple of years back to move along. I'm I mean, sorry. that's what this is. And I, I'm not to sound like a, a jerk or anything, but – I don't fully disagree with that just because it's like, you know, when you get a scholarship, you they're like they're investing into you and, and hoping that you can project to be this. And if you're not living up to your end of the bargain of that scholarship, then it's like, hey, son, you know, we've tried for like three years now, two, three years. And like, cause at the end of the day, like these players can get coaches fired. Like if they're not performing, yes. right. if they're not performing <laughs> like bro, if you're not you performing, if you're, just, if you're just being a jerk, kid, <laughs> you, you're not working hard. You're not doing what you need. You're not, you're not executing what you're supposed to execute. Like you're just not performing. Like if a coach keeps, keeps trying to play you and play, bro, eventually it's going to be like, all right, bro. Like now I got to get fired now because I didn't trust it into you to handle what yeah. you were supposed to handle. And you not, you so that that conversation honestly that's i don't really have a problem with that. i feel like that's fair like if you didn't been if you didn't been in that school for x amount of time and like you just not living up to your end of the bargain of this scholarship and it's like well hey man and especially at michigan state like some of those guys shouldn't even um just should I say that? <laughs> <laughs> well there, there were some zoom babies you know the guys that got recruited during the, you know, the pandemic yeah. they weren't allowed to see them up close so they got the benefit of, of being getting the scholarship yeah. based off of what they Fluff look like numbers. on Zoom. Fluff your numbers. I mean, you know, yeah. So. I mean, because even there were some some guys who shouldn't have. I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying to be. There's just some you guys. You have to be politically correct here. This is this is Sparta, man. We I, kick people into the pit. 
Right, it don't hey, matter. Hey, hey, that's true. Hey, listen. Uh, okay, that, hey, was listen. Good, yeah, that was a good one. That just was keep, good. You like that? Like that. Just, yeah. just, keep, just keeping it a buck because, yeah, man, I put in my work at Michigan State too, so I feel like I personally can say this. Some of the guys who who were there, like, you shouldn't have been there. Like, you, you really weren't that good. Like, and then – or if you did get blessed to have this opportunity, again, like I said, you're not living up to your end of that scholarship. So, yeah, man, well, and that's why that's why, I res- that's why I respect how how Tucker is kind of he he's doing what he needs to do with it and trying to get some of these guys out of his transfer portal and then working his ass off to recruit who he needs to recruit to get his guys in there. And I I respect him having some of those conversations that I know he's had with some of these other guys with like you know they helping them get other places. Um, that's just kind of how it goes because some of those guys shouldn't have shouldn't have been there. And I even know them like my time I've been at the University of Toledo. I knew something was kind of weird when we would have a guy like we would have a guy then out of nowhere, Michigan State to come in. And it's like, bro, how in my mind, I'm thinking he ain't Michigan State good. Like, what are we doing? Why is he up there? Like, why are y'all? Why are y'all coming after the guys who we trying to get? We weren't competing with Ohio State with recruits. We weren't competing with Michigan with recruits. But then Michigan State had come in. I'm like, bro, what? Are, like, yo, coaches, what are y'all doing up there, bro? Like, he, ain't there. Like, he need to be here in the max. So some of those guys who were at Michigan State before, they needed to be down. They didn't need to be up there. So that's why I know Tucker's doing his best, man, trying to get some real dogs in there. And it's, and it's only year three. Give like he gonna get them, man. He's definitely gonna get them. You gotta keep trust the process. Well, I remember Coach D uh, when they established keeping it real Mondays. It was like freshmen and sophomores. Yeah. That was Elliot Daniels, Ashton Henderson. I'm gonna plug those two to create that program. But I remember they had Coach D speak to the group, and this was a time I was around that three and nine season where we were struggling a little bit. Mm-hmm. And Coach D goes in there. I've never seen Coach D keep it real like this. Like he truly took that mantra of keeping it real. <laughs> And he looked those guys in the face. I mean, I was sitting in the back like shocked that he said it. But he said, I recruited you guys. We recruited you guys. We told you the bells and whistles. What we're going to do to get you here. When you get here, I'm giving you two years to show thyself the worth of your scholarship. After that, and that was a true, real, like, business acumen of telling these guys this is a business yeah like this is not a free ride you got to earn it every day you have to man that's kind of like i said people gotta like these coaches they gotta feed their families too and like that's kind of wild how your success is based off of the player like and if he's not doing his job and if that and if that continues to happen bro you can get fired and you out looking for another job so it kind of goes hand it goes hand in hand man so javon i mean you played in the league Right, so you played. You got drafted into the Tennessee Titans. Played there for for a, a, a number of years, and you've seen guys that were drafted first round, high first round draft picks, right? Yeah. And you know the NFL spends tens of millions of dollars and resources and going in the backgrounds of these kids. You know, finding out everything about them and going back to the kindergarten teacher, finding out about what, what this neighbor thought of the guy. You know, seeing what his medical reports are, and and they're still wrong. Fifty percent of the time, they're still wrong, and, and now you're expecting a college to look at a kid just based off of what two four seven sports or rivals dot com says, or what your eyes say when you see this kid playing against other high school. Yeah, that we're going to pay this kid X amount of dollars and that he's going to perform. You know, yeah. like is it not setting themselves and the kid up for failure in a way? If the kid, you know, so like buyer beware. If the kid takes these dollars. You know, I, I kind of like I do like the way that Mel Tucker's doing it. He's not he's not throwing the big bags at kids. That's why the five stars aren't coming, by the way, everybody. Five <laughs> stars aren't coming here because the bags aren't dropping here. You know, Mel yeah, Tucker's doing it the right way. And these stars, and these, stars these stars oh. don't always tell the truth about guys, man. Like no, they're not they're not valid. What was what kind of star were you? I was a three star. Oh my god. Yeah, what, I wasn't who were like, you? I was a three. Three, two. They didn't have stars when I played. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that was the stars. You, you had to look up in the sky. Yeah, we, look up in the what sky kind of star am I, Lord? <laughs> you know, they didn't have stars. Star. <laughs> Top 100, though. Javon, you know, that's all we had. Okay. Let me let me get to some fun stories. These guys are trying to get like. Deep. I mean, no, we got it. We got it. I agree. I agree. Here we go. The, the party. Let's start the party. <laughs> yeah. Ju wants the party. Come on, Ju. What's up? 
you were you got some beer for this guy a hell of an athlete <laughs> All right, and you always could turn it on and off because something that really struck me about you, and this really sticks out. We're playing my senior year at Iowa. <laughs> We're in overtime, double overtime. We go, we score. The defense is out there, and you and I are sitting on the the water cooler bench there, and you just come to me straight face, and you look at me and say, "Hey, if you were a superhero, what superpower <laughs> would you have?" <laughs> And I just start laughing. And then Coach D sees us and he comes up. He he looks at us. He thought he's like, You guys good? You 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 in the game? You we're like, Yeah, coach, we're good. And we just look at each other and go on and say, you remember that? Yeah, I, I don't I don't I don't how how do I I don't know. I didn't want it I, but things felt just too uptight. Like I don't know. Like I like to there has to be some level of like, yo, we're we're calm. We're like, we're we're still locked in now, like we're locked right. in. But because sometimes I don't know, this is just me. This is my own personal feelings. I feel like sometimes when you are that uptight, you're prone to kind of make a mistake. Like, yeah, instead absolutely. of being a little loose. That's just how I that's just what I believe. So I don't know, I man. I, that game. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knocked myself out. <laughs> the Sean Green, no, the tight end, man. Oh, I came okay, in. Okay. Oh. Yeah, so like those, uh, I don't know, just those random stuff. Like, I don't know. Like, I just, I don't know. Just so kind of with, with that. I always ask my, you and I had this great relationship with running back by committee. And at the end of the day, it was the hot hand that played. Yeah. And uh, Stray, we all talk about this. Now there's a running back by committee where it seems like each back's getting a series. What are your thoughts on running back by committee and how it should be played? It shouldn't be. And convenient. Michigan State's running back by committee. I don't think it, sh it shouldn't be. If you're going to do running back committee, bro, you can't be running like. I, like three, four different guys, man. Like Talk I feel like you that. gotta, you gotta. If you got two, like, and that has to be clear in the room. Like, yo, like, like two guys can be can. That's that's it. Unless and let, and then if one guy just completely shows he's just above and beyond, then it's like, all right, we gotta roll with this man. But if you're doing running back by committee, I personally feel like if it's over two, if it's three to four, then that's doing too much because then there is there is a rhythm. That kind of comes with being a running back. Like once you're in the game, you're in the rhythm of a game. Like I don't know. So I think it has to be. I think two, oh, two, wow. two. Oh, is, rhythms, man. So do you think the transfer portal plays into that in the back of coaches' minds? Because when you and I were there, you and I knew the game plan for run was going to be you or me. Mm -hmm. Everyone in the room knew that, and it was okay. It was accepted. Everyone played their role. Yeah. Do you think now coaches feel? Hey, you know, we got this guy through the transfer portal. We have to give him so many plays, or this guy's a highly recruited guy coming in. We have to get him plays so he doesn't transfer out. Do you think that takes a play? Um, possibly, which I feel like it's kind of it shouldn't. It should be more so just how you recruit guys. You're recruiting out of the transfer portal. You if you see somebody who like, hey man, we think this dude should, could could help benefit our team. You bring him in, you recruit him to come to come there. If he comes, he gets a chance. You get a chance. If you don't make the most of that chance, and if you're not performing, then hey man, it's it's, it's a miss. Like you gotta mm -hmm. just consider it. You just consider it a miss, and then you you keep rolling. Like now, I got some stories now, but I'm <laughs> I'm a, I'm gonna make sure like I keep it PG. I'm gonna keep it PG. Oh boy, so. Green, do you remember when we used to have our we used to have training table outside of the restaurants off of campus when we had like carpool? Yeah. And remember, you remember where AJ Jimerson, he left us because we was like carpooling, right? Like he used to, <laughs> he was supposed to be our guy to hook us up. Freshmen yeah. didn't have cars, so we had to get with upperclassmen. And sometimes I ride with JU. That was a great experience all the time. You never know what to expect when he's driving. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't I don't remember who we who we caught a ride with finally. But we also caught up with AJ after we left because you was extremely pissed about it that he did that to us, right? Mm -hmm. do, do you remember when we was in Cherry Lane and we truly out had like a one-on-one -on -one brawl fighting Man, we, inside? We was, I remember that. Yeah, we was like we was like we wrestling. Ten rounds, wrestling. We were 10 yeah. rounds wrestling. 10 yeah, rounds yeah. wrestling. Now, this yeah, is important. Man. We didn't like, have, like, no we didn't have no phones. We had, like, these, like, old cameras. No oh, one has handheld Yeah, boys. it was, like, handheld <laughs> boys. Small tapes. But I remember. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, I remember that. I remember, you know, Jay, you know, Devon had that lower body strength. Right. So I remember AJ was trying his best to try to pick him up. <laughs> Javon's like, just sitting there like, come on, man. Yeah. Sitting yeah. there. Hey, body slamming AJ. Left and right. Hold on. Why you bring this up, man? Why you bring this up? I had to. Look, because look, we talk about team bonding because we respect each other. Like, we left that room. We were still well, yeah, boys, but AJ, like, yeah, and AJ Dale, that's one of like my best friends. Like I was absolutely. in his wedding, like he was supposed to be in my wedding. Like that's yeah, that's my dog. Like, that's my man. But yeah, I remember that. Well, we, we had. To, well, we talking hey, about man, the bro- fun bro- stuff. Bro- Brothers wrestle. We can wrestle. Oh, absolutely. Like, bro- oh, yeah, bro- brothers, yeah, brothers wrestle all the time, man. Like you know, no, no, no issues after that. We was good. Question but, is, yeah. are they wrestling right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, Javon. Like obviously, you know, I got love for you, brother, man. We, yeah, I, before we let you go, I have a confession. Oh. <laughs> oh boy. So Javon and I roomed together. So every home game, he would like to we would try to see who gets to the hotel first. Because Javon wanted to watch cartoons. Anime. Anime, you know, yeah. I wanted to watch college football. So Javon would always beat me to the hotel. You know, because I was, you know, taking my time. He he ha ha, you know. He he ha ha. So what I started to do, I used to call the Kellogg Center and have them hide the remote. (laughs) 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 So I could take my time. And then I get a job like, man, he just stuck. (laughs) You just, you pissed off now. (laughs) That's my confession. Finally, it's coming. (laughs) And I don't want to let you go yet because we talked about on our podcast uh, episode where Offense, defense, when we're out on the field. And when one side of the ball wasn't getting it done, yeah. like, for instance, if the offense was struggling, but the defense was getting three and outs, I remember all the time you would come over and be, like, loudly, publicly saying, defense, keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. We'll get it right. We suck it right now. We'll get it right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, like, what, what was your DNA of, like, talking that through? Was it strategic? For your no, office line and office. I just, line I just, office I just knew I just knew ultimately my mindset was always about the team. Like, yo, we we have to do this together. Like, if one group is sucking and the other group is doing okay, like eventually we're gonna you're still gonna need that group, like who's maybe not play, having their best game, whether it be offensive or defensive. So I just kind of in my mindset was always it's better to encourage than to like than to kind of like pull pull them down. Like to pull any of us down, like people respond better. I, I don't know. My vibe with, with with everybody was, I felt like I would get a better response if I was more positive than just trying to rip everybody. Like, I, and because again, no, nobody could do it on themselves, man. Football is the ultimate team sport. Like, nobody can do it on their own. Like, absolutely. You know, I feel like we got to talk about like what's, what are the keys to winning this game? Yep, keys like, to winning this game. What is keys, he doing? Hey, like, like, he keys waited. to winning. Keys to winning this game is, like I said, up front. Offensive line and defensive line have to perform. If we do not control that line of scrimmage, we will not win. We have in Michigan. They British. They're going to offensive. They're going to try to run the ball on us. They're going to try to punch us in our face, and that's running the ball. Like we got to be able to stop the run, and our secondary got to be able to hold up when they do take them shots. And then offensively, bro, control the line of scrimmage. You got to be able to get a push when it comes to running the ball, and then you have to be able to protect, like. That handles everything. Like, in order for Michigan State to continue to go where they need to go, they have to be dominant up front on both sides of the ball. Like, that, 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 that will, st- everything starts up front. That is what I truly, in my heart, believe. And that's like, I want to be a part of that recruiting, like, recruiting great offensive line and great defensive line, and everything else will fall into place. Absolutely. So, you're, you're now coaching the running backs at University of Toledo. Well, I, I I'll help out. I'm not the running back coach, but I okay. I, yeah, but you you know running backs. If you were at Michigan State right now, I'm putting you on the spot. Out of the three backs that runs the ball, who would you have running the football? All right. Well, I'm a, I'm a little biased because when I was there, I I was part of uh, Elijah Collins recruiting, and I like I like Elijah, so I personally. Now, I've always I've always liked Elijah when he was in high school and I was a part of getting him there with recruiting. And then once I left, like, I, I, I don't know. I like him. Like, I like him. I like his dad. Like, I, I like he's such a good dude. And really, it's crazy. He could have been bounced. He could have transferred out and he's That's still there. Right. But 
I would, I probably would have rolled with Elijah, but that's just on the outside looking in. I'm not in that's there. That's what I say I too. I don't know who's doing what in practice, or I don't know <laughs> how the vibes are going, or who who maybe seems to have the hot hand at you know doing an inside run or something. Like I don't know. So I know that's I don't see hard, I don't but. see practice, but I see production on Saturdays. Ooh, <laughs> hey, I mean, yeah. So I would kind of probably <laughs> I would kind of go I would go with Elijah, but that's more and that and like I said, that's more so I personally know him compared to the other guys, some of the other guys who got like who got transferred in. Right. Okay. So, what is your position right now, Toledo? Uh, it's, it's more sort of the player development role. That's that's the side okay. I'm on. I wanted to get into that that coaching side of it. I wanted to be a running back coach, but like, man, there's the more I got involved, and the more I saw, there's a lot of sacrificing that goes into being a coach, your a family. position coach. I, and what I've learned, I don't. You have to really love it. If I, mean, I loved playing football, I don't really love the coaching side of it. I want to be able to help pour into these kids what worked for me things that didn't work for me. And then I want to be able to go home. Like I want to be able to go see my family. I want to be able to see my daughter. Like I want to, I want to, I want to be able to see my loved ones. I don't want to be in the office till 10, 11. Like I know that junk. I know they pay. I know they get paid good. And that's cool. Like that's cool. But like what also makes me feel rich is being able to see my folks. Absolutely. Yes. No. Well said, Javon, man. I mean, we definitely appreciate you and your time and your contribution to all of Spartan Nation, man, for everything that you've done before and you continue to do today, man. I we really appreciate you coming on the show with us. No doubt, man. Hey, yo, and I'm still trying to do my part with Michigan State, man. I'm still help hey, trying to help out with Hall of Fame ballot, man. I'm still right. trying to help out with recruiting. Oh, yeah. Hall of Fame ballot. Absolutely. Right now. Starting. <laughs> campaign. We'll start it, baby. The campaign. Hey, hey, Javon. Hey, I appreciate y'all, man. It's been fun. Javon. Yo. If I was your best friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little inside joke with us. <laughs> Appreciate it, Ray. <laughs> Just can't help it. Man. Life of the party, Ju. All Choo -choo. love, man. I love you, brother. All right. Love y'all, man. Appreciate y'all. Thank you for having All me, right, man. All right, man. All right. Appreciate you. You know, that's great interview there, guys, from an all Spartan right there. This is just an incredible guy. Incredible football player, but also a de deeply involved father and husband. Javon Ringer, Ring, Ring. Spartan legend. Yeah, agree, definitely. That's one of my favorite interviews and one of my favorite dudes, you know, ever, you know, be able to say I played alongside with someone. He's a guy that I always, you know, will hold to that level there and respect. Great guy. Really appreciate him coming on. Definitely. All right, guys. So, you know, we're going to put a ball on this one. You know, that was Episode two, here live from the Jolly Pumpkin. For Otis Wiley, J.U. Culkin, I'm Jason Strayhorn. This is Sparta. Have a good night. God bless. And go green. Go white. Go white. <laughs>